New Hope TV, your encounter with God. Dear friends, this morning I, I love to share about the seven verse of Christ on the cross. The Bible says when Jesus was been by nailed on the cross, he was been put laid, they are laid a crown of thorn on his head. He carried the cross to Golgotha, they scourged his body, they whipped his body, they slapped on his face. And the Bible says that he was fell so many times on the way to, to Golgotha. A, 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 a Christ who was, uh, was, 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 was a human as well as divine, gone through all the sufferings for the sake of the human race. For every soul of the world, the past, present, the future, Christ was suffering on the way to Golgotha, remembering the salvation of the human race. And he's just one person standing between the heavens and standing between the earth and interceding and praying for the God's creation to, to redeemed from the sin, redeemed from the, all the filth of the world, redeemed from the, all the curses. This, this morning, dear friends, as I'm going to share about the seven words of Christ on the cross, I like to share that this morning that by the time he was being nailed on the cross, a lot of blood was flown from his body, dear friends. He was very, very, very tired. Um, I'm sure that the lack of blood, lack of water, uh, it might have been so difficult for Christ when they, when they lifted the cross and when he was hanging on the cross. And he, he said this uh, seven beautiful words. But every word is so prophetic. Every word is so convicting. Every word is so healing and enormously powerful. And if you can able to meditate those seven words on Christ on the cross, it can bless and benefit your, yourself and your household this morning. As it is said, said in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse uh, 32, uh, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, one other one is left. You look at the background of this uh, this, this storyline. If you look at the background, you can find the other two criminals who have been crucified along with him, and one on the right, one on the left. And you can understand this uh, people who have been involved in this crucifixion. They were trying to say that this man also criminal because the, they wanted to project the world at large at the time that a innocent man, a holy person, sinless person. Uh, a person who have been who have been no fault of him, they they want to crucify him along with other criminals. Try to prove that this man has sinned, this man has committed uh, something against the, the, the system at the time. And can you imagine, dear friends, a creation was trying to crucify the Creator. So this is something like uh, something like you know when a, when a home situation when the children try to crucify their parents that's one of the worst thing ever happened in the family. Here the situation much more than that. He's the creator of the he the heavens and earth, the creator of create everything, allowed by the creation to be crucified him for the for the sake of the salvation of the creation. And the Bible says Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do doing. Now Jesus is speaking the first word with the forgiveness. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. His, his forgiveness is very clear and trying to defend them for they do not know what they're doing. If they had known, they would have not done this. That's what exactly trying to convey. If they know that they are crucifying the Savior, the Lord and the Master, Redeemer, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, I'm sure they would not crucify him. They, that's what he's trying to tell the fire, Heavenly Father. Even today, when Jesus is sitting on the throne, he must be saying the same thing today to each one of us. If you would have known all of us this morning that that we are crucifying Jesus Christ by our activity, by our action, by our thought, by our speech, by our intellect. If you would have known very clearly that every moment of our life we are crucifying Christ on the cross, you would, I'm sure you would have not done what we are doing right now. Jesus is trying to convey this thing on the cross. Many of us this morning who listen to us today with our own action, with our languages, with our thought and speech and action, we crucify Christ every day. We are trying to nail him on the cross. We are trying to betray him on the cross. Like how the Peter, Peter denied him three times. 
servants and Judas betrayed him. Most of us this morning, listeners of the teaching today, we are playing this role of betrayal, denial, crucif crucifying Christ by our, by our all action today. And Christ is saying one word to the Heavenly Father, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. He is trying to intercede for us. He's trying to defend us. He's become the advocate at the same time, replacing us in the, in the, in a, in a, in a, as a sacrifice. He's saying, I want to sacrifice my life for these people. Please, uh, please, please accept my sacrifice on the cross and forgive them. And, and Jesus was, and they divided up his clothes and by casting the Lord, then the people stood watching and the rulers were sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself. If he's a Christ, a Christ of God, the chosen one. They are mocking at the Lord Jesus Christ. The world is mocking today what Christ done on the cross right now. So many billions of souls all over the world today mocking at the Christ, saying the shameful thing because they do, could not understand what Christ done on the cross. Even today, people are mocking at him. People in authority, people in, people in authority, pow, powerful people, they mock at Jesus even right, right now all over the world. I'm, sh I'm sure Jesus must be telling the Heavenly Father, Father, forgive those people. They don't know what they're doing. Dear friends, on the cross, Christ is pouring out his forgiveness to the world. All over the world today, Christ is saying, I am forgiven you. I have blessed you. you are, I, want, I want to tell the Heavenly Father, forgive them. So they will come to me and they experience the eternal life. The, 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 then the Bible says, then, but the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 23 verse 40, the communication goes between the criminal on the cross and the Christ. Can you imagine this Christ with a great difficulty? His hands are nailed, the feet are nailed, crown a thorn on his head, all over the body there is a wound, the body is scurred, the, the blood is flowing, and he is listening to a, a precious conversation of a sinner on the cross. The Bible says, but the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same dead sentence, we are punished just Justly, we are getting what our deed deserve, but this man had done nothing wrong. Dear friends, I, this must be the statement for all of us this morning. We deserve to be punished because of our sin. But this person called Christ done nothing wrong. And then, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your, your kingdom. The Christ uh, listening to the conversation of the criminal and the criminal telling him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The Holy Spirit of God might have prompted this sinner on the, on the cross. The repentance might have flown to the sinner. The Holy Spirit of God prompting him to say something which is amazing. I think we need to say this word every day in our life. So Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, uh, he's telling the Jesus, Jesus, I know you belongs a kingdom which is everlasting, but remember me when you enter your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Christ is promising today. Christ is not telling tomorrow you'll be in paradise. Christ telling that today, today as you remembered your sin, as you ask forgiveness from God, as you repent for your sin, as you reconcile with God, Jesus telling all of us, today you will be with me in paradise. It is a very powerful statement. The Lord is, uh, salvation is immediate. It is not tomorrow or day after or when you die. The Christ is telling all of us this morning, those who turn to Jesus with a heart of repentance, heart of forgiveness. Jesus is telling all of you right now who listen to the teaching this morning, who I realize your mistake, come back to Jesus. And with a heart of forgiveness, Jesus is telling today all of us, today you will be within paradise. In spiritual realm, you have been called the God's child. And today, right now, you will be in paradise. Not even a moment delayed. And immediately, you will be in paradise. Dear friend, this is one of the amazing goodness for all of us this morning. The, please understand, Christ is telling all of us this morning that today you will be in paradise. Today you will be in paradise. Today you will be in paradise. I don't know how many people want to kneel right now. Ask forgiveness from Jesus Christ. Saying, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Today, I want to be in paradise, but forgive my sin. This morning, dear friend, 
friends, I want everybody to realize the fact that, that you should you should forgive ask forgiveness from the Lord, and the Lord will forgive us, and today you'll be in paradise. And Jesus said in the third place, when Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he allowed standing nearby, he said to his mother, you know, interesting part, the Christ is looking at his mom, his mother, who was, who was accepted the father's will, as a little girl, when the, when the angel Gabriel spoke to her, and the Bible, the Holy Spirit of God came upon her, and she gave birth to the Son, Jesus Christ. From that very moment of accepting the Father's will in the life of Mother Mary, till, the, till she saw Christ on the cross, she had walked with, this, with her son. She all the time loved her dear son all the time. She has gone through lots of pain because, because she was knowing the son she was born, son she was given birth, is none other than the Son of the Most High God. And she has said in, a, in a, one, of her, one of her worshipful songs, she said, she has saw the, saw the salvation through Christ Jesus. She saw Christ as a savior, as the mother. And here is the mother who must be, might have cried and cried day and night, looking at the son who has been crucified, the crown of thorn piercing head. She might have looked after him, pampered him, to bless him, little boy, growing, growing elder, then he became a carpenter. She has seen early morning, get up in the morning, preparing the breakfast for the son, lunch for the son, dinner for the son. She is completely engrossed with the son. And here Jesus looking at from the distance, his mother, along with the loved disciple, John, the Bible says. Interesting part, none of the disciples were there. Only the youngest among all, John, the, the disciple, was standing with the mother. This is an amazing story to say that Christ was interested in his mother. Christ loved his mother. Christ wanted to bless his mother. She, he wanted her to be looked after by a somebody who was not going to, be, who was going to live long. Because as per the history said, John are the only disciple who had not been martyred. He's the only disciple who lived, lived a long life. And I'm sure mother might have had, a mother of Jesus might have had a wonderful time with John. And the Bible says, Dear woman, here is a son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, disciple took her into home. Now it is interesting transfer transfer relationship here right now. The Christ is looking at the mother, and uh, and the, um, and looking at the mother is trying to say, I know I'm not there physically with you, but I want to give somebody on on behalf of me. I want to give somebody who's going to live with you for a long, long time. I want somebody who can love you and bless you, and he, none other than John the disciple. And he was looking at the disciple trying to say, my dear, my dear, my dear brother, today onwards, you must look after this mother of mine like your own mother. As dear friends, I, many years ago, I remember when I was, uh, when I was at home uh, and my mother once they called me and when I was staying with the brother's place, uh, she called me and said to my sister-in-law and looked at my sister-in-law, she said, you must, you must look after my son like your own son. And she looked at me and said, you must look after the sister-in-law like your own mother. Now I, I understand what is the gravity which I went through at the time. This morning, dear friends, Please understand, Jesus is telling the John the disciple, you are the one who deserve to look after my mother. It's an amazing statement, testimony for John to realize that Christ is so much, so much responsibility to give to John, but knowing well, he's the one who's going to look, look after his mother. Dear friend, this morning, I understand, do you want to be like John the disciple right now? Many of us today love Mother Mary, but I'm asking you a challenging question this morning. Do you want to be like John, who looked after the Christ's mother so well? Do you want to be like John, who has really fulfilled the instruction of his Savior Jesus Christ this morning? And the Bible says very clearly, Christ was so much conscious about his relationship with his mother, because he wanted his mother to live a peaceful life, dear friends, this morning. Then the Bible says in, in, in Gospel of Mark, in Gospel of Mark, the Bible says, At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, Gospel of Luke chapter 15 verse 33. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachani, which means, my God, my God, why you forsaken me? 
Now here is the, here is the Savior, Jesus Christ. He's, he's on the cross right now. He's, 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 he's having, having all types of pain and suffering. But of all the biggest pain that Christ took is took all the sin of the whole human race. He took all the sin of the human race on himself. He became the curse, the Bible says. He took all the sin, whatever the sin which you committed from the time you came to the world till today, until you die, Christ took every sin on himself. Today, dear friend, this morning, realize if you are a rapist, uh, he took that sin. If you are a man who committed adultery, he took the sin. If you are a murderer, he took, his, he took your sin. If you are a man who has been living under all types of filth of the world, took all your sin this morning. Please transfer your all your sin to the cross of Jesus this morning. That's the reason when the Heavenly Father, when the Heavenly Father sitting on the throne, he could not see his son. And when the Christ wanted to look at the Father in heaven, the Bible says uh, he could not see the father there because the son was full of sin he became full of darkness and the light could not see darkness he took all the darkness of the world on himself dear friends and he's saying Eloi Eloi Lama Sabachani which means my God my God why you forsaken me he's telling the father He's telling the Father God. He, 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 is, he is standing as a replacement or you can say as a substitution for you and me. He's, he's telling, my God, my God, why you forsaken me, dear friends. Many times in our lives, uh, we got a similar experience in our day-to-day -day life. When you get to, uh, get to a situation where people ditch you, people deny you, people betray you, in your own family, you are not really accepted well by your parents, by your wife or a husband or your children, you dearly say this word, my God, my God, why you forsaken me? Here, the world has forsaken Jesus Christ. The Father has forsaken him because he took all the sin of the whole world and became curse. And he, he could say, I am the best sacrifice ever you can think about to the Father. And he's saying, my God, my God, why you forsaken me? The temporary disconnect from the Heavenly Father, the pain for Christ is so much so, it's Throughout the eternity, he never, never had a situation where he had to disconnect from the Father. He had things happening in his life. He needed to disconnect because the sin has taken over and he has offered a sacrifice, an innocent sacrifice, a lamb to be slaughtered, at the right sacrifice, the blood of Christ washed all our sin. Today, this, this very moment, dear Rally, dear friend, whatever the sin which you committed in you and in your heart, nobody may not be knowing the Christ knows his sin confesses sin this morning and says Jesus forgive my sin and the Lord in his own way will go to forgive you this morning dear friends in the gospel of uh, uh, John chapter 19 verse 28 later knowing all that he was completed so that scriptures would be fulfilled Jesus said I am thirsty as jar of wine vinegar were there so they soaked a sponge in it put the sponge, sponge in the talk, stock of the Esau plan lifted to Jesus' lips. The Bible says very clearly, he said those words, I am thirsty. You, 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 you are thirsting physically, no doubt, but more than that, a thirsting for the souls. He is craving for the souls of the whole human race. He craved, he remembered your name and my name on the cross, dear friends, 2,000 years ago. He was in eternity, he remembered us. Are you thirsting for the soul of everybody? Because he is only work to come to the come to the earth. The Father sent his only one Son who believes in him shall, shall not perish, but eternal life. Christ is thirsting for the soul this morning and he's trying to tell all of us this morning please come back to me I'm thirsting for the soul come and help me and embrace me you return to me like a prodigal son coming back to the father you all of us this morning prodigal sons and daughters come back to Jesus because Christ is calling out he said I'm thirsty and the Bible says and when he had received the drink Jesus said it is finished the Bible says after all this thing is completed the work which is given by the Heavenly Father. What amazing statement. It is finished. 
It is finished. You don't need to do more anything. Believe what Christ done on the cross. I in you not to do anything more excepting in faith what Christ done on the cross. For every situation you are going through in problem, Christ has finished that work on the cross. You got a physical problem, Christ has healed us. Emotional problem, Christ healed emotion. If you got a psychological problem, Christ healed our psychological thoughts. If you got a financial problem, Christ has blessed us. If you got an intellectual problem, Christ has blessed us. This morning, it is finished. Dear friend, this morning, thank God, celebrate this morning, saying, Lord, you have finished the work for me. I don't, I don't need to do anything more than what is required right now. You have finished the work on the cross. Christ has finished the work for your family. For your business, for your profession. Just believe what the Christ done on the cross. You find the prosperity is flowing in your life this morning because the Christ has finished. You're doing a fantastic work. Book of Romans says you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus Christ this morning. Dear friends, Christ has finished for all of us what the work has given for the Heavenly Father for him. He was amazingly blessed today to tell you this morning Christ has finished the work on the cross. The last word from Gospel of Luke this morning, I just take this portion, you know, to understand the last word, what it said. It was now about sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For sun stopped shining and the curtain of the tempter, uh, tempter was uh, torn in two. I'm sorry, and the cut of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out the loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said, said this, he breathed his last. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He's finished the work. Father, Heavenly Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus, the last word, uh, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He's handing over himself to the Heavenly Father. After completing the race, he finished the race, dear friends. He finished the race for you and me and went into the heavenly realm at the first offering, the Bible says, uh, and he's waiting for us to come back to heaven right now. He's finished the work for us. He's completed the work for us. He's waiting in the heavens to join him for eternity. Dear friend, this morning, Christ has completed the work for us this morning. And he said it, he said, the Father, unto thy hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his last. To conclusion, dear friend, this morning, as you meditate the seven words of Christ on the cross, Every word will bless us you and your spirit, your soul and the body. Every word blesses your family members. Every word blesses your, your, your business and profession. Every word will change and transform your life because for all your problems, the seven words of Christ spoke on the cross will bless us you. I'm sure he might have took a lot of pain lifting his body to speak those words with a tiring body speaking this word with a purpose that all of us will be blessed this morning. Let us bow our heads with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you this morning for those beautiful seven words of you spoke on the cross, O oh God. I thank you this morning for your amazing blessing today. Lord, I pray this morning all those seven words because alive in our lives this morning will fulfill in our life this morning and every word will become promise for us our lives this morning we pray God help us Lord to meditate this word throughout this throughout the time of our life and truly to help us to walk with you Jesus Christ today you said those words it is finished father enter the hands I commend my spirit thank you for this prom promising word for us a profound word for us, a words of encouragement, words of blessing, words of healing, words of conviction, and words of transformation this morning. We, we believe all the seven words we started activating in our hearts, activating our soul, the body and spirit, so we live a victorious and a holy life, pleasing the Heavenly Father. With all this prayer, 
Lord, we make the mighty and the matchless and the glorious and powerful name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen and amen. Amen.